What's my pleasure? So far, it's been this Funko Savage World lineup. And we're going to continue with this video as we have a look at the Savage World Hellraiser 3 Hell on Earth Pinhead. Yes, no pain, but pleasure looking at these figures from the folks over at Funko. We're going to figure out how tall Pinhead stands. Being that these, of course, all use the exact same mold. Yeah, it's safe to say six inches, just like the other figures. And probably just like Michael Myers after this one. And we switch those six inches over to centimeters. That six inches turns to 15.4 centimeters in height. Now, even though these are all the exact same height, let's bring in some of the other figures that we've looked at. There's Pinhead next to Leatherface. Funny enough, like Leatherface is just the trickiest to get to stand. I'm wondering if a lot of it is because he's got this front weight of his apron. Do you think that might be the reasoning? I think that might be the reasoning. But Leatherface, we've already looked at. We've looked at also Freddy Krueger. There he is right there. And we started the review with, I actually still think, and I'm gonna hold true to this, I think that Jason Voorhees is the least interesting of the lot. And it just so happens, if they had only changed, I know, I sound like a broken record, if they had only changed the green, I think the green to a gray would have vastly improved the figure. But there are the four figures so far. We just have to look at Michael Myers. Now, of course, before we look at Michael Myers, we're going to look at the accessories, and we're, of course, going to look at Pinhead. It's interesting that Pinhead is from Hellraiser 3. It seems to be always, whenever we get Pinhead figures, they're always from Hellraiser 3. I wonder if it do, has something to do with licensing. Maybe these Hellraiser 1 and Hellraiser 2, they can't use the likenesses from, so they always use Hellraiser 3. Something to think about. Something to also, also think about, he comes with the Lamet Configuration Puzzle Box. Not much in the way of paint, I have to admit, rather just kind of bland. Well, not that's not fair. I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have been so harsh on you, Box. It's a nice gold, I will say that, but unfortunately with no other color added to it, the gold, just all the details get sort of just lost amongst this metallic gold. Again, don't get me wrong, it looks good, but I would have liked some additional coloring in there as well. Interesting also about the puzzle box is Hell, uh, Hellraiser's pinhead doesn't have any means to hold it. None whatsoever. It's literally there. You can look right at it, but he doesn't have any ways to properly hold it. His hands just aren't open enough. They probably could have looked to pop a replacement hand off and give him like a flat palm like this, where you could have put the glove, put the box into his hand. And ultimately... You could wish it until the cows come home. That puzzle box isn't going anywhere. So it sort of has to sit by his foot. And he can just look at it. Just think to himself, man, that would really look good if I could actually hold it. I can't. But man, I would love to just to hold that. And it'll just sit there until the end of time. Let that sink. Let, let that sink in there for a second. What he does have the means to properly hold are the two Cenobite tools of the trade. One is a serrated knife. One is a serrated hook. He doesn't have it where you can attach it to his waist as what you would normally see in the movie. But at least, unlike the puzzle box, he can hold it in his hand. So we'll give it that. You don't need any bit of prying. And even though the handles are a lot smaller, it seems, than Jason's sword, <clears throat> not machete, and axe, even though the handles look smaller, 
Pinhead can perfectly hold it. They're not going anywhere. You could do the Blizzard Dairy Queen test, and those weapons aren't going anywhere. So that's good. At least he comes with that. Man, oh man, wouldn't that just absolutely suck if he came with a puzzle box as his only sole accessory and he didn't have the means to hold it? You want to talk about hell? That's hell right there. I digress. We're going to move that to the side. Having a look at Pinhead, I like this figure a lot. It also so happens, too, that it's a nice way to break up the otherwise browns, grays, beiges, and born greens. Let's not forget that as well. Pinhead certainly stands out amongst the pack because he's got this bright, shiny black to him. He still has esque traits to it being Savage World. More importantly, he's got this like kind of shredded loincloth that is on the front and also on the back of the figure. His boots also get a little bit of that happening as well. But even though it, it's that, none of the, the figure really looks like it's made out of skin or fur. Instead, it still looks like it's just as much the tight and uncomfortable leather as it does in the movie. I suppose it sort of is the more the departure from it being Savage World. Other than really just his build and his stylized face, none of this really reads as Savage World to me. It's almost like they didn't really get too creative. They almost went too creative with Jason, and not creative enough, I feel like, as, pin as Pinhead. Just because you simply give him the same proportions does not make a Savage figure on Pinhead. Anyways, let's have a look at his face. I like his face. He's almost comical. Like a big smile on his face. He's just the happiest guy in Savage World. He's also the happiest too because he knows that everyone is going to be plagued to damnation. The pins are very firmly sculpted into his head. You'll notice that they've left off this area of pins. No pins happening here, man. None right here. I guess that's okay. I mean, I don't necessarily need pins everywhere. And for the size of how big these are, if they made up this area of his face, I feel like it would just be too much of a distraction to actually appreciate the face sculpt. Paint is minimal, but it needs to be minimal for Pinhead. Nice bright white face. Can't really quite make out eyes. Instead, they're just big sockets of just vacancy. Just big sockets of vacancy. Uh, to their credit though, they did put in gums. That's a nice added bonus, I suppose. Black outlined lips. Again, I really do like the silver bolts that they put in. It's not even so much pins as they are bolts. We should just be calling this guy Bolt Face. The peeled away areas of his flesh are still visible here on Savage World Pinhead. Everything, again, like looks like it does from the movie. I'm not really even sure what I would have done differently, but I definitely would have made him a little bit more quote-unquote savage. He doesn't look savage enough. But I'm not going to gripe because, much like Masters of the Universe, not everybody looked like a caveman. Sure, He-Man looked like a caveman, but then on the polar end of it, you know, you'd have characters such as Man-at-Arms. Man-at-Arms wouldn't look, well, I guess he had the Loin cloth, but you had a lot more or techno sort of characters as well, which I guess Pinhead could certainly fall within that category. Now, again, going back to something I had mentioned with Leatherface, could you imagine if all of these had vehicles? Ooh, that would be so very, very exciting. I don't see Funko ever doing it. I don't think I've ever seen Funko branch to vehicles. Pops have come with vehicles or Pops have come inside vehicles, but I've never seen standalone vehicles. I guess. Mileage will go as well whether this line is successful enough. If it's successful, sure, maybe they may venture out into doing, you know, vehicles. It would be neat if Pinhead had like a giant puzzle box on wheels that just kind of opened up and inside each of the, the sides had spikes. Getting, getting overly excited there. Pose bully on this guy. His head rotates all the way around. You will get to one point, one stopping point where it won't get past this part right here. So, again, you can fight with it, you can curse at it, you can wish that it wouldn't be there, but it's not going to change the fact that you can't move the head past that point. So you're sort of kind of relegated to that and that for his posability. Not that you really would be posing his head that far anyways, because that would probably hurt him. It wouldn't kill him, 
but man, it would really ruin his day to have his head all the way twisted back like that. His arms rotate all the way around. Nothing in the hands. Um, he does have waist swivel. His legs split out and forward and back on the legs. And kind of the same problem that I had with Freddy Krueger, the same thing also happens a lot with, with Pinhead. When I move his leg, this leg, not this leg, but this leg here, his leg is prone to popping off a lot. Luckily, it's just on a ball joint, so that's not something where it's going to break off. I'm going to cry running up the stairs. I hate you, Funko. I'm going to yell loudly. I'm not going to have that problem. And nor should I have that problem of running up the stairs and having a tantrum over a broken leg. But either way, this guy's not going to have a broken leg. He isn't going to have, unfortunately, the necessary means to hold said puzzle box. So instead, I'm just going to put it right there. And he can just look at it. He can't, he can't pick it up. But he's just going to be able to look at it. One could certainly say that Pinhead is the least quote-unquote savage of the Savage World figures that we've looked at thus far. But similar to Masters of the Universe, not all the characters from Masters of the Universe looked like cavemen. So Pinhead kind of stands out and stands out in a good way. Not much of his outfit has changed really from the way it looks in the movie, but still it's perfectly fine and he has the necessary proportions to fall and fit still within this, this lineup. I love the head sculpt though. He's almost sinister, but he's also having a blast. Like he's going out to play kickball and he's really excited. I'm not so excited by the fact that he can't hold his uh, puzzle box. I mean, you know, you kind of think Pinhead's going to come with a puzzle box. He, at the very least, would be able to have the necessary means to hold it. But no, no, he, he just gets to look at it. I didn't want to put it here in final looks because I feel like I would just be teasing him. Putting it in front of him, knowing he can't pick it up. He knows he can't pick it up. That's just teasing. You don't, you don't want to tease people like that. But either way, though, I really do like this figure. I feel as if he might be my second favorite from this lineup. Not, even though I'm not including Michael Myers into the fold, Michael Myers, I feel like, is going to be my favorite from the lot, but I do feel like Pinhead's a fun figure to be incorporated into this lineup. Still, of course, some of the more notable characters of horror history could have probably taken the place of Pinhead, but I guess a lot of it boils down to what licensing that they had available. Again, a lot of that maybe has something to do with why this is specifically Hellraiser 3 Pinhead, and not just solely Hellraiser Pinhead. This, uh, this lineup certainly, again, leaves the door wide open for future horror icons making their realm into the self savage world. One of the ones I'm really thinking of right now is um, I'd like to see a Candyman, and I'd also like to see Chucky. I think Chucky would look really neat. It's probably something that Funko is considering, all pending, of course, how well this first lineup of figures actually does. Speaking of these lineup of figures, if you're looking to pick up this lineup of figures for your own collection, you should be able to find them now at local comic book stores. Today's bloodthirsty, terrific review, terrorific review, we were having a look and continuing our looks at the Funko Savage World Hellraiser 3 Hell on Earth Pinhead, which, as you probably can figure it out, leaves only Michael Myers left before we've had a look at the full lineup of five figures. So make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already, and certainly more spooktacular reviews will be lined up for the rest of Spotober. Do a whole lot of branding over this month. Yeah. Um, also, guys, make sure you swing over to the homepage when you're finished this video. See if there's anything that you may have missed along the way. Kind of go through like a checklist. Say it loudly or say it in your head. I've looked at that video. That video I haven't looked at. Oh, that's a new video. And you'll be able to see if there's anything you may have missed along the way. As in, And as always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.